Hi, it's Kaylee Mack with MX5 Digital. Today we're going to show you how to install our digital cluster. It does require some new sensors and some wiring, but it can be done so long as you are paying attention to what we do in the video. We do recommend professional installation. Please exercise proper caution when working on your Miata at any time. First, we'll start with the removal of the cluster. You'll need a Phillips head to remove the screws holding in the column cover and the under column cover, also known as the access cover. Next, we'll remove the screws in the instrument hood. Carefully pull at 3 and 9 o'clock on the hood. Do not yank down or upward. Remove the screws holding in the instrument cluster. Then, use your fingers or a screwdriver to release the black and white multi-pin connectors from the back of the cluster. Remove the cluster. To separate it from the speedometer cable may require some force, but another wire may still be connected to the back of the cluster. Set aside the cluster until the end. Push the speedo cable into the engine bay. Next, we're going to replace the speedo sensor, which will require workspace underneath the Miata, so get it lifted with enough room to move around. Unscrew the bottom part of the speedometer cable. Transmission fluid may spill, so exercise caution when removing the bottom end of the cable. Next, screw on the new speedo connector, but only three quarters of the way. We chose to do it this way because it allows you to install the new speedo sensor without having to remove the PPF. You will then snap on the new cable connector. From there, you should be able to tighten the speedometer connector all the way. Replacing the temperature sending unit may be the hardest part simply because of its location. We used a 12 socket on ours to get ours out. Take the nut off the new coolant temp sending unit and set it aside. Screw the new sending unit in place. Then, strip the wire that attaches to the sending unit and crimp a new connector on. Then you'll reattach it. The oil pressure sending unit requires the removal of the intake plenum bracket and the oil filter. Replace both after you finish. First, remove the intake plenum bracket, then the oil filter. Unplug the electrical connector. Remove the OEM oil pressure sending unit by twisting it off. Before installing the new unit, attach the provided nut. Then, you can screw it in. At this point, you can choose to reinstall the filter or wait until after the next part.
we went ahead and reinstalled it. Take the existing wiring harness and cut the connector off. Be careful not to pull on the wiring harness. Crimp a new connector on and attach to the new oil pressure sending unit by removing the black piece and resecuring it after. There is a connection on the firewall above the transmission that holds the speedometer in place. Once it is no longer secured by the tabs in the engine bay, you may remove the speedometer cable. Cut the cable to remove the white tabs and the black suction piece as we will reuse this for our new speedometer cable. Push one end of the new speedo cable through the firewall where it will connect with the new cluster. Reinsert the white tabs back into the firewall. To guide the other end of the speedometer to the speedo cable connector, Push it underneath the engine, but over the transmission to the passenger side. You can use the old tabs meant for securing the old speedo cable to secure the new one by wrapping it around the tabs. Finally, connect it to the white cable on the speedo cable connector. Now we're going to connect the red wires together. The red wire is meant to give the speedo life by connecting it to the battery. Once connected, you can unlatch the PPF tabs and add the wire in to keep it off the ground and loose. For now, don't worry if the wire is entirely loose as we will adjust length in a second. In order to connect the red wire to the battery, we will have to cut into the main battery harness boot. Gently pull it through. Cut some, but not all of the extra length of the wire off. From there, you can crimp a new connector on. Add it to the positive terminal of the battery. Please remember to exercise proper caution when working around a battery. Next, we will work with the ground wire, which is black. Unscrew the bolt on the PPF transmission brace. And curl the ground wire around it. Then, tighten the bolt back in. Return to the driver's seat and make sure you have the top end of your new Speedo cable handy. The only connectors you'll need for the new installation are the black and white multi-pin connectors and the speedo cable. Seat the new cluster in its spot. Attach the new speedo cable and tuck in any excess cabling into the dash for neater seating. The gray cable is responsible for calibration and resetting the trip odometer. We recommend leaving it out but securing it underneath the steering column. The purple cable is the dimmer and can be connected to the parking lights. This enables them to dim the cluster when the headlights are on. We chose to leave ours out. Please do not connect it to the rheostat control wire. Insert the black and white multi-pin connectors until they snap back in.
Test the cluster. It should light up as soon as you turn the car on. Standard lights such as the e-brake light and engine light should also glow. You will no longer have a defrost light, but the function will still exist. And now your new digital cluster is ready to go.